All right, Jet fans, here we go. First back-to-back -back win of the Sala era. First divisional game in 12 that we won. And it was against the Finns? Man, Victory Monday is going to have a little extra taste tomorrow. What do you think, Dan? It's going to taste good, man. <laughs> Let's talk it out. Here we go. <laughs> All right, dude, what a game. I mean, this is something that we've been waiting for for a long time. Jets fans are long to hear it. Like you said, two wins in a row, three and two overall, one and oh in the division. We're right there in the hunt. This yeah. game had some ups, it had some downs. It was kind of all over the place, especially for the first three quarters. Jets showed out in the in the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter Jets, baby. But take take me through your, your first quarter to the third quarter lead the fourth quarter aside where we kind of were able to pour yeah. on the gas, but how were you feeling throughout the first three quarters? I mean, well, how, how did you feel after that first play of the game, Dan? Yeah. Sauce Gardner just running in on the blitz. I mean, I hope Teddy Bridgewater is okay. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, sure. I, I love Teddy B, but man, defense came out and right away. Uh, but then I think we kind of, you know, offense took a little while to get going as, as we've seen in the past. Um, but then we just, you know, once we, once we got a little bit midway through that first quarter, end of the first quarter, I, I thought we were going to score our first touchdown of the first quarter when, when Brees Hall got, uh, got caught by that shoestring or no dragged the defender 15 yards. He couldn't, yeah. couldn't drag him one more. Um, <laughs> but you know, Hey, maybe next week we'll score our first touchdown in the first quarter of the season so far. So we'll see, but. Dude, it felt good, man. Then right, right in the start of the second quarter, feeling good. Um, and then I, I think, you know, we we had some some shots to just crush their throats, but we like to we like to keep things till the end. And you know, like I said, we're not gonna talk yeah, about the fourth quarter just yet, but it was I thought it was a pretty good, honestly, a good battle back and forth between between us both, you know what I mean? Between two division rivals. Um it again, going into the fourth quarter, it was anybody's game, you know what I mean? So I thought. Momentum swayed a little bit away from us in that that third quarter and a little bit more towards the fins, but you know how you know how we like to do so. Yeah, man. And we had some aggressive play calling. Yeah. I mean, Ulbrich really stepped up and that first play really did set the tone. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. man, the first two punts by Braden Man were inside the 10 yard line, just Special looking teams, really, dude. really good. Yeah. And then just to have Sauce Gardner to be the one that came off the edge and 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 defensive sack. rookie of the year. Yeah, could very easily have the defensive rookie of the year and the offensive rookie of the year. I mean, Brees Hall will get offensive rookie of the week again. Just I sure hope so. 100% will. And there's a chance that that he gets def uh, defensive rookie of the week. So, I mean, an extremely fun game when it comes to our young talent. I mean, last year we knew that we were young. We And essentially that was the reason why we were losing games because we were just making that excuse yeah. every week. Hey, we're young, we're young, we're young. But now we're mixing in, you know, some of these veteran players with some of the younger talent. I yeah. mean, guys like Brees Hall, Sauce Gardner, Jermaine Johnson, those dudes Studs. are unbelievable talent. talent. But now you mix that in with guys like Zach Wilson and Michael Carter and that Whitehead, Uzoma, yeah, people who've sure. been there before, you know but what just, I mean? Like, but just even just the, the born and bred New York yeah, yeah, the guys picks. that we yeah, yeah. drafted. The guys that Joe Douglas has essentially said, this is going to be the future of the Jets franchise. And to see them come to fruition, to see them actually start working out something that we haven't had in a long time, yeah. you know, actually developing a team throughout the draft and then adding little pieces here and there in the off season, CJ Uzama did well, but you know, he's obviously he's going to be, it seems like he's going to be utilized as more as a, you know, a blocking tight end. Yeah, but, yeah. But Conklin wasn't really involved at all. Tight ends, tight ends were were quiet today. Just, you know what? It just I'll, wasn't I'll a part that. of the game script. I don't know yeah. what Michael Fleur had before the game, but he just he didn't have it a part of the game script. And Zach is mixing the ball around. I mean, he's not really targeting one receiver because Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, and Corey Davis, every single one of those dudes can can become the the. I think it was. I think it was targeted guy. six six different players have at least fifteen receptions or yeah. something like. Or it, it might be flipped. You know, six different players on the Jets have at least fifteen receptions, and we we lead the league. So, and yeah, again, exactly. granted, you know, granted, Flacco played the first uh, the first three games. You know what I mean? So, but I, I'll take that dude spreading the ball around like you said, just getting getting people their feet. And the only weird thing is Elijah Moore not being more in the mix. I mean, I think he had one catch this game. 
Yeah. I, and again, maybe, maybe he's just not getting open. You know what I mean? Since I, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. About I don't that. know, man. Cause that, that was like, when we spoke about this game, he was my highlight that he's getting open yep. almost every single route over 50% of his routes. He's getting open. And I wanted him to get, get the ball more often, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of like, I don't know how true this is, but when you have like a Corey Davis, Garrett Wilson, who's coming up and, and is getting open and an Elijah Moore, when you have all this talent, it's not like you're going to have one guy that gets featured. Yeah. Exactly. And, and that's what, that's kind of what we're seeing. And that's what we saw with Joe Flacco when we were able to, to um, win his last game, we saw Garrett Wilson was just a featured receiver versus uh, versus the Browns, you know, exactly. and it was yeah. essentially like, whether he's open or he's not, we're just going to throw it to Garrett Wilson to see what happens. And we haven't been seeing that we've been seeing Davis mixed in the running backs mixed in. We've been seeing all these different guys mixed into the offense because we do. Ha- and that's, what's amazing is we have, we have a lot of talent. Yeah. We have a lot of guys that have the ability to make these explosive Anybody can break it, you know, break a game wide open. You know what I mean? And so. we're featuring them. Dude, that play by Brees Hall. I mean, granted, he was uh, he was essentially left alone. It was a little bit of yeah, a breakdown. Yeah, it was a breakdown from from their secondary, from the Dolphins secondary. They kind of just forgot about him essentially on the wheel route. Yeah. But Wilson kind of took his time. He knew he had him going out there, didn't see any of his receivers and said, I'm going to look for Brees, had him and then let him do the rest of the work. And the thing about Wilson this game too is he wasn't perfect, right? Nope. I mean, he missed, he missed a few open guys. Missed you know. a few open guys, underthrew Elijah Moore on that one pass. I think it was in the third quarter, maybe second quarter, where he had him open for like a 25 yard gain and missed yep. him short. And we were kind of saying, hmm, you know, what is this game going to look like if he's missing receivers like this? But even late in the game, when he had a, a few really good uh, completions, he had Brees Hall where. And he missed him to the wrong shoulder. And yeah, Brees Hall was, had to adjust. Yeah, and then uh, it was, uh, no, it was uh, Garrett Wilson. I think it was a third, a third and four. Or something it was like both that. of them. It was yeah, both so of them. It was a third. It was and four. Garrett Wilson on, was that fourth down or third down? Third, uh, third down. Third down, I think. Like third and three or something like that. Yeah, yeah, after we came short. back from the timeout break or something like that. Yeah. And he, he threw the ball to his wrong shoulder. And that was all Garrett Wilson just adjusting to the ball, Great was catch, able to yeah. body catch it and get that first down. And then we also had Brees Hall on another kind of, you know, out route where he had to adjust to the ball. It wasn't, it wasn't thrown completely, you know, in the bread basket. So, but those are the type of things that make or break the games. Yeah. Yes. Your quarterback might not be perfect, but are you able to adjust to him? Are you able to still make the play when things don't go perfectly? And the jets were able to do that today. And it really showed. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I couldn't agree more, dude. Like I, it's just phenomenal to have this feeling. We said it, you know, we said it after the Browns game was a historic win. It was a little bit of a shock factor, but beat the Steelers, you know what I mean? And then come, come back and win this first, first divisional game in a, wow. in a long, long time. So dude, it's, it's a good day to be a Jets fan. My it friend. is. And this is like the first taste of maybe it's not the same old Jets. Yeah. Maybe this and- narrative that Sala keeps preaching week after week after week, because it is one of those things that like, you have to see it in order to believe it. I'm yeah. not just going to believe the Jets are going to be great. And there was a great video that came out that, and, and Salah essentially said, there's two different pi- types of people in the world. Those that live by faith and those that live by belief. And those that live by faith, they feel that they can do the impossible without actually seeing it. And yeah. then those who live by belief are people that need to see it in order to believe it. Well, guess what? You can live by faith. That's great. Good for you. I'm so glad you have that mindset. But as Jet fans that know what we have been for a long time, we just can't believe we're going to be good. We need to see it. We We need need to see see the W's. And And we're seeing it. We're starting to see it. And it's special and it's fun. And um, we got a tough week next week that we'll break down throughout the week versus the Packers because, you know, they're coming off a loss to the Giants. There's a lot of fun football in New York right now. Um, But first time again in 2015. Since 2015, that both New York teams are over 500, dude. Right, exactly. Well, Crazy. let's break down. Let's break down our gas and our break. Give me your gas from this game. What was your kind of main takeaway in terms of your gas? That you know something that you really thought stood out. All right, Dan, you ready for this? I'm very ready. All gas, no break today. <laughs> it was. All gas, baby. Dude, I, it was start start of the game. To the end. Yeah, we yeah, we we sputtered a little bit there, but like you said, Wilson seems to be coming on it, coming out, you know, uh coming out, coming out on his own, just playing his own game, learning, learning what he does, does well, doesn't do well. And I mean, yeah. Sauce Gardner is 
a, le- a legit contender for top cornerback in the he's league number, right now. He's got his number first four interception. Pick for a reason. He showed spoke, spoke it into existence. You know, I think we talked about in the preview. Said all my guys are getting interceptions. It make me want one. Well, you know what? He he went out and took it today. He did. Um. So yeah, dude. I I think defense came out. The rotation is you know I, I, rotation's finally working. I don't know. Is that a, is that a player thing that they kind of you know rallying behind their coach? Is Ulbrich calling things different? I, I I'm not on the sideline. I don't know, but. Defense got is getting to the quarterback more and more. Um, Elijah Vera Tucker, dude, left guard, right guard, yeah, left tackle. He's making it work. Right tackle, left tackle, and right tackle. These last two weeks, out of position, zero sacks, zero pressures. Kids playing at a at an all pro level in his second year, dude. He's unreal. So, yeah. I mean, it's it's all got. All right, I got one break. I got one break. I think the refs called some weak okay. pass interference calls on yeah, both did. sides of the ball today against they us did. and against the Dolphins. I will say that. Now, again, it's easy to say that when we come out and score 40 points and we win, but I feel like the refs had some some pretty terrible pass interference calls. Agreed. Agreed. But that's not on the Jets. That's not on the know? Jets. And, exactly. And that's going to vary depending on your your referee team from from week to week. You yeah. Know, there, there are some guys that just call, cause more, uh, call more, and there are some guys that are a little bit more lenient. Um, on those 50 50 balls and you know these guys were a little more harsh but I agree dude they were kind of all gas from the get-go which was great which was great to see my guess was Wilson just protecting the ball and yeah. um kind of he's he's completely just uh continued what he what he started at the end of the year, any turnovers year. Today, did we no no turnovers no boneheaded mistakes there were none of those plays where you kind of just shook your head staring at the floor yeah like my goodness I I cannot believe this is happening. I can't believe that the the dolphin that we're just giving the game to the dolphins. Yeah. I kind of felt like that a little bit when we were giving them all of those, just like you said, those pass interference calls. But again, that was that was not a hundred percent on us. There were some really really soft calls there. Yeah, yeah. So Wilson protected the ball and he just did what he needed to do to win the game. Exactly. Essentially, you know, simple as that. He just, I mean, and that's what these franchise quarterbacks do, and especially in these type of games. We were playing against a third string quarterback, a rookie quarterback who had never played before in the NFL. Yeah. So I think Zach Wilson, the back of his mind was just kind of like, just don't make the huge mistake. Exactly. Don't give up a pick six. Don't give up a fumble where they have the ball at the 15 yard line. And we didn't give them that. That Dolphins defense looked scary in the beginning of the game. It's very solid. Yeah. And you can't, and that quarterback, that backup quarterback wasn't, you know, he wasn't a wide receiver or a punter trying to play quarterback. Yeah, he no, was no. a legitimate quarterback. He could throw some decent balls and we no still slouch. held uh, Hill and Waddle to like, I think it was under a hundred yards, total. 70 yards, 70 yards combined. Yeah. So that was really, really special to see and exciting to see moving forward that Zach was able to just kind of protect the ball. I got to do what I got to do and seeing him still use his legs where he scored that touchdown, that third and goal or whatever yeah. it was. That was really fun. So my guess was definitely Wilson just protecting the ball. And as far as my break is, is we didn't really see it until later in the game. You know, I'd, li- I'd like to see the Jets. Yeah. And I'm not saying that we were losing, you know, throughout the game and we had to come back again in the fourth quarter, but just play a little bit more of complimentary football in the second and third quarters. We seem to come out hot. We seem to kind of be excited and, and look really, really good out of the gate. And then we sputter there a little bit late second quarter into the third quarter. And then we go, Oh goodness. Now we got to really play hard again in the fourth quarter. So yeah. Yeah. Just play. But that's, that's tough to do to play four quarters of complimentary football. We're still, a, we're still a young team. They're still learning. Um, but if we can, if we can do that moving into the middle to the later half of the year, then I think we're going to be a special team that might have um, might be playing some meaningful, uh, meaningful football in December, dude. I dude, I, I couldn't, I agree with everything you just said there, dude. I think there were te- there were times in the first quarter where I feel like, and it's again, it's tough to say and and easy easier to say. And after reflecting, looking back, like there were times in the first quarter where I think we could have killed the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Their offense was sputtering. Obviously, you know, I think uh, the the QB was kind of coming into his own, trying to figure it out. Maybe had a little bit of yeah. nerves. I think had we started and scored right off, like scored first drive of offense and you know, got some points other than that safety in the first quarter, I think it would have been a much different game. But like you said, we've, we held in there. We, we stayed until the end. And then again, I think I got to look up the stats. I I don't know exactly what it is, but dude, we got to be outscoring teams in the fourth quarter by a lot. No, it's, it's huge. It's unreal um, between the Browns game, between the Steelers game and this game, we got to like our point differential in the fourth quarter has to be unreal. 
I saw it today. It was like, oh, I don't even want to say just because I don't want to be horribly wrong, but it's it's like um, it's what it's what's winning this game. It's like right it's now. like a four to one like yeah. you know, type of deficit, like something like that. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, so we're when winning you got, games in the fourth quarter, huge. When you know you don't want to rest on your laurels and say like, yeah, okay, we'll get him in the fourth quarter, but like we're getting them in the fourth quarter. We're getting, and, we're, and that's what you want to see. You don't want to see out games. Team, you don't want to see a team score 17 points or 14 points in the four in the first quarter and then score two or three in the fourth quarter. Yeah. You want to see a team that is going to be stronger later in the game than they are in the beginning of the game. Cause yeah. those yeah. are the type of teams that win. I mean, when you're getting tired and as much as we want to make fun of this 60% thing that Sal has been putting into place, I mean, Guys are buying into that. They're so young yeah. and they're so impressionable that they're essentially just buying into whatever they're being told. And they're being told the right things from Sala and Michael Floor and CJ Mosley and the veterans. They're, they, they are buying into this mindset that Sala has created for them. We're seeing and a pumped up Sala on the sideline finally. Sala, yeah, he's getting, he, yeah, he's getting. He's going to need two hold me him. back. He's going to need two hold me back him. guys here soon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So it's um, exciting, dude. Dude, two things two things worried me today though, dude. Wilson, gutsy die for that that touchdown. Yeah, man. I thought he thought, had a you know, we, with especially against the not especially against the Dolphins. That that doesn't mean anything, but like head injuries, dude. That that's what scares me because now a new we're we're playing it after the whole Tua situation. NFL and things can be playing. I mean, Braxton went down for a little and bit. And let me today tell you something, dude. Two weeks ago, Teddy Bridgewater comes back in that game. Oh yeah, yes, agreed. Like that that is not a if game. If it wasn't the Dolphins, out. if Teddy yes. Bridgewater was on any other team, it was like the perfect storm. It was the perfect storm of why yeah. a quarterback needs to come out of the game. Yeah. Any yeah. other team, any other week before this week, he does his little sideline shenanigans in that blue tent, and then he comes right back out. But they're being extra careful. But you know what? That's maybe that's what the game needs. You know what I mean? We, we obviously we want to preach and to protect, protect, protect players. our players. And again, I love Teddy Bridgewater, so I'm not. I, I don't Thank want. You. I, I don't want to wish jet, anything will against him, but jet and he's a good player. He's a good exactly. Dude. So, yeah, dude, it's second victory Monday in a row. It's been a long time, and we, as a fan base, deserve it. And it feels gonna enjoy this all week. Phenomenal, all week. All right, everybody. Well, we're gonna wrap it up there. Yeah, really exciting week. Uh, we play the Packers next week. Gordon and I will be get together, getting together, and releasing a video on Friday, um, just discussing the upcoming game. And um, it should be a good one. The Packers are going to be out for a little bit of blood after losing to the Giants. So we'll have to see what happens. Hopefully we're in jolly old England. Off. Yes. Yes, they, that's right. That's we right. are not playing in England. The Packers are coming back from playing in England. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. They're, I mean, that was a, that was kind of another fun game that they played overseas. I, I, can't, yeah. I can't remember how the last one was, but at least this one was. They're expanding their fan base. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a good time. All right, man. All right, Jets fans. J-E-T-S. J-E-T-S. Yes, yes, yes. There it is. <laughs>